Coño. Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level, in which my guest co-host and I discuss the most recent interview of the week, and, and we kind of bring out some of the highlights and help talk about them in a way that can help give you advice and tactical strategies to use to bring your own business to the next level. And before I introduce today's very exciting guest co-host, I want to mention that last week's interview was part two with Cindy Novotny of Master Connection Associates, a very popular consultant in the business with a specialty in events. She speaks a lot at various conferences, including Engage. And the next level episode, talking about Cindy, was a very special, another special guest co-host, David Stark, who many of you know is a very, very successful and popular planner and designer. And so it was such an honor to have David on the show. So I want to talk about another honor, which is today's guest co-host for The Next Level, and that is Abby Larson, founder of the wildly popular online wedding resource, Style Me Pretty. Abby and her husband, Tate, bootstrapped Style Me Pretty and grew it to one of the largest reaches in the industry, sold it to AOL in 2012, who then announced they were closing it down early last year. And after an incredible outcry from the industry, Abby and Tate took Style Me Pretty back. And you've got to listen to my interview of Abby and Tate on September 10 of 2018. Again, September 10, you've got to go back and listen to it. Not only do you get to hear about Abby and Tate's upbringing, how they met, and how they built Style Me Pretty into the success that it was and is, but also how they felt when they heard the news of the closing down, what their reaction was since taking it back, and the challenges that they're facing about rebuilding a business that now has to exist in a vastly different world than what it was in 2011. And they are doing tremendous things now with the business and have more plans in the future. So welcome, Abby. Thank you, Andy. I'm super excited to be here. First of all, it's always fun to talk about, you know, this industry that we love so much, but to be a part of this call-in interview is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Isn't it crazy? And that was the first one. And I don't know if people have been uh, hearing me talk past episodes, but I interviewed him a second time a couple weeks ago in New York. And so I'm going to be releasing that within just a few weeks. So, but yeah, it was what we're talking about is part one of Colin Cowie, the just very well known and successful planner designer who creates luxury experiences. And just some of his clients include Oprah, Elton John, Nicole Kidman, Michael Jordan, Jennifer Aniston, Jennifer Lopez. Bruce Willis, Eddie Murphy, Jerry Seinfeld, Kim Kardashian, and Tom Cruise, and also major charitable fundraisers and numerous corporate clients, including many Fortune 500 and very high-end sophisticated brands like Bergdorf Goodman and Kersner International Resorts, which is where I had quite an honor of working with Colin on a wedding. It was my first luxury experience with Kushner Entertainment. And, you know, the experience of working with him is indescribable. I mean, to know firsthand how he creates and how he produces And so, you know, I want to urge everyone, first of all, if you haven't listened to it, to go back and listen to that entire part one, because Abby and I can only get to a few of the highlights. And so, Abby, yeah, it's so much fun to have you on with this. You know, one of the highlights that kind of grabbed my attention was how he talked about, and I know this is a big word for you, if people go back and listen to your interview, authenticity and bringing it to create bespoke luxury experiences and how today everything is about that. What do you think about that? Like, how do you view authenticity, first of all, and what do you think about it as related to Colin? Well, I don't think that we have a choice anymore. I think that experiences have to be authentic. I think, you know, the way that brides and grooms are approaching the wedding planning process now is different than ever before. While, of course, like rules of etiquette and those foundational moments are still a very much a part of things, I think they want it to feel authentic. You know, I think that that's the buzzword right now, but it's a meaningful buzzword and nobody does it better than Colin. I mean, his life in general is so incredible and so storied and so rooted in this feeling of service and creating these beautiful moments around sort of simple things. It's really cool to listen to his approach to authenticity, but really how it relates to his own experience in life. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's interesting, his whole past and where he comes from. And he mentioned how even on his website, you know, he wants it to be to feel like it's an authentic experience in the website. And he also talks about how, you know, as you know, 
how he designs to the senses and how can you, I mean, in terms of making it authentic and really human and real and have this kind of experience, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you taste. I love how he talks about designing to the senses. Yeah, it's incredible. I think that, you know, being authentic, I think really has two sides. One is being authentic to yourself as a designer. And I think that he is nothing if not that. He really, really trusts himself and his instincts. And he takes, you know, every lesson that he's learned from being a kid in, you know, a house that was organically and constantly entertaining to being in the military and <laughs> trying to find ways to bring joy. Oh my gosh, it was so awesome. It's such a cool story. But like, you know, he's always thinking about ways to bring joy to these simple moments. So I think he's very authentic to himself, but even more powerful is how authentic he is to his clients and how much of a unique experience he wants to create for every single couple that walks into his door. I think that, you know, the care and the TLC that he puts into, you know, that very first hello into the moment, you know, they have that awesome last dance floor moment is incredible. Yeah. And I love how, I mean, obviously one way to manifest that is it is a unique story. And he mentioned how no two projects that he has ever done looks the same. And do you remember you brought it up right before we started to record the story of his first wedding, which was, I mean, of all people on the planet, his first wedding, Hugh Hefner, right? The founder <laughs> of Playboy. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine the pressure. But of course, he handles it with such grace and really, you know, goes back to his what he knows and his foundation. And that is creating, you know, an environment that makes sense. That's kind of like, you know, built around, like you said, these senses, not just the senses, but the, what season it is, if it's morning or night, what environment they're going to be in, just going back to that formula and really letting, you know, this individual experience inspire him as opposed to, you know, using past events and things like that. I thought that was just so cool. Well, and I also thought, like, I don't know if it's literally, if he was the first to do it, I wouldn't be surprised if he was, if he innovated. Like when he talked about that wedding, you know, and again, tied into making it unique because he talked about all the conversations that he had with first Hughes people, his, the president, and then, you know, getting to Hugh and, you know, getting a lot of information on how can he tell a story. And, and I thought, again, don't know if it was innovating. I wouldn't be surprised. But the way they, he presented the food, because they wanted food stations, you know, and, and he was talking about how it's funny. I never really put it together, but it makes sense that, you know, at a black tie affair, you don't want people in line. And he created it to deal with this theater with the way the food was presented. Do you remember that? He was talking about how each station was revealed in a certain way and the way it looked, and I was blown away by that. I mean, there's that element of theater, too. I mean, every single moment from, you know, when they walk off the elevator to having someone greet them to, you know, incorporating everything that they want and love, their interests, their desires, how they live their life, you know, the space, the time, incorporating that into each individual event. It's so clear in the way that he you know, talks about these events that he produces, there is no cookie cutter approach with him. It's not even in his vocabulary. You know, I, I honestly don't, I wonder if he could try to replicate an event because I kind of doubt that his, you know, creativity would allow him to do that. You know, and I want to bring this up too. I've brought this up in a few episodes before is, you know, in order to help make it unique, and I do believe no matter how many weddings we do, whatever, corporate, gala fundraisers, all of it, but let's stick with weddings, you know, each couple is unique, right? There's a whole story with the individual, and then as a couple, how they are together and how they're presenting themselves to the world. And I remember from, I think it was this interview, part one, he also talked about how it's their first joint presentation of who they are. Yeah, he did. That was really interesting. I think that's actually a great point. You know, up until now, we've most couples are kind of planning birthday parties and they're doing very small one off things for themselves. And this is the first time that they kind of have to blend stylistically, culturally, religiously. You know, they have to blend all of these things into one cohesive experience. So, you know, not just anybody can walk up off the street and plan something that feels so seamless and really, you know, gives that statement that this couple is hoping to make. 
Yeah. You know, one thing I wanted to add to that is that therefore, because I even though I'm doing music, you know, part of what I do, because it's not just these acts showing up, I'm very involved ahead of time, getting to know the client like a planner. And so I'm oftentimes I'd be even creating a timeline or I'm collaborating or giving input into the planner's timeline. And one thing I notice is that there are a lot of people who still have these templates for timelines, you know, and at this level, I have never seen a template. And when I'm doing it myself, I don't get it. Like to me, you know, I want to treat this couple as very unique. And yes, maybe there's some pieces of it that are dictated by the way the venue is. Is it outside? Is it inside? What kind of a meal? How many courses? You know, maybe it's inappropriate to have dancing between courses. Maybe there's a reason to do it. But still, even that timeline, which is really dictating the flow, which is such a critical piece of it. So to me, the timeline, it's all about the flow. And why would we just hand somebody this template? And again, a lot of people do. So, you know, I kind of want to bring that up too. I want to suggest that people really consider and including the client even more so maybe in some of those decisions, you know, that's a big part of it. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I think a lot of people use templates. I think it helped bring some sense of control back to that planner. But at the end of the day, it's the people that are willing to really, really listen to their clients and what they want and then dream big for them that ultimately get to this place where Colin is, I think. And, you know, there was a moment in this first interview where, and it was kind of an aside, but I actually thought it was one of the more poignant and meaningful moments in the interview where Colin talks about how with every event, no matter what it is, he tries to tell a story with a clear and finite beginning, middle and end. And that is his only template. How that story unfolds is really based on that unique couple. Yeah, I love what you're saying about that. I mean, that is really, you know, it's almost like telling like any author. I mean, they they got to think about, you know, what is the beginning and that, yes, there is a middle. And I love how he talks about that. You know, another thing that I know you and I were talking about before we hit the record button was how Colin is also, and this is, you know, typical of, you know, a really good planner designer is creating an experience for the client along the way. You know, it's not just the night of the party, but, and I love how you brought up, Abby, that even when people arrive his office, I remember he had mentioned it's specifically an intern or someone who works for him who gets to know ahead of time some pictures, who are these people, and therefore can recognize them downstairs outside of the lobby and greets them, which surprises people. And immediately, right at, that's the first touch point, they're feeling taken care of that, wow, Colin's people know who they are and they're coming to greet me. They're not just meeting me up at the on the floor that he's on and and then how they bring him into a certain area of the office and I saw it where they're sitting and they're seeing through glass and they're seeing the rest of the area and it's really beautiful and, and they're there for a moment to take it all in and, and you know and they have I don't know if he still does it but the macaroons with their initials <laughs> carved in the macaroons. It's pretty amazing right? <laughs> yeah but why not right because this is a high touch service very elegant why wouldn't he start showing them right this is before he definitely has the business and yes even Colin Cowie does not always get the business. Preston was saying that too. You know, these people are not getting everything. And so I love how he starts it right then, right in the beginning. Now we're in the experience. I mean, he's on another level in terms of the kind of clients and that luxury market that, you know, so many of us are looking to tap into. I think he probably feels a lot of pressure to make sure that that client feels like they can put their trust in him on a very high end luxury space from the moment that they step into his office to the moment they leave. And those little details, whether, you know, he could have easily just put out a beautiful plate of macaroons, but he took that one step further and he had their name, you know, calligraphied onto the piece. So, you know, he's going to show them that even if it's just a meet and greet, he's got their back and he's going to make the experience exceptional. Yeah. And before we move on to another topic, I know that he even talked about how it lasts after, you know, after when they leave, he gives them some things and it, it continues afterward, too. You know, I just want to take a moment and say, wouldn't we all like to have more exposure in our markets? I mean, certainly our own handling of social media and various other tools are ways that we do gain more presence. Though, what if you could have professional outside help? that you could depend on to really get you the results that you need. And I know we all are happy to get much more presence. Well, I wanna tell you about our sponsor of today, OFD Consulting. 
They are an award-winning publicity agency that focuses on the wedding industry, and their client portfolio ranges from top-tier planners and venues to well-regarded national brands and industry thought leaders. And OFD Consulting has placed clients in a slew of popular online and offline publications, including the New York Times, Martha Stewart Weddings, Style Me Pretty, many others. And they also have a service that's dedicated entirely to B2B press for those looking to elevate their brand reputation among peers through online mentions, guest articles, podcasts, and speaking engagements. So if you are a small business and you want to get more, get your name out there, get more exposure for your brand, get your message out there, and you want to just like dip your toes in the PR waters, check out the OFD Collective, which is a three-star membership with robust educational and coaching opportunities, along with ongoing press leads. So definitely check out OFDconsulting.com. Again, that's OFDconsulting.com. You know, another topic was, and I'm curious how this relates with you with uh, Style Me Pretty, especially with the change, taking it back and taking another look at it, is brand, you know, what is the brand? What is the message? And Colin had talked about how he realized that he was kind of confusing what that brand message was for consumers. And, you know, if people listen to the interview, there's a lot of detail to it. What did you think about that, the whole idea of messaging your brand? And you got to be clear and kind of look at it over and over, right? You don't just do it and you're done. I mean... The inspiration market, you know, especially from a blog or a website perspective, is so intensely saturated. You have to know who you are and you have to know what your brand stamp looks like. You have to know what you're going to put forth for the world so that they can, the readers who, you know, you have two seconds to engage with, they instantly know it's you. And I think that when you, you know, there are very few companies that have started luxury and then also offered a more mass market brand. There are very few companies who have successfully bridged that gap. And I think Colin is super smart to be willing to try, to be willing to experiment and to be willing to pivot when he feels like, you know, it wasn't necessarily the right path. I think Colin is an icon, you know, in the luxury space And I think he knows that and his, you know, nailing that brand is really important to him. And I think that's super smart. It's a good way to kind of approach every business decision that you make. Does this align with my brand? Does this align with the brand that I want to put out there for the world? And if it doesn't, then it's probably not going to work. Yeah. And also, you know, taking a look at it, like, do we have to, in a sense, rewrite it? You know, I know for myself, my God, I can think of at least three times in my history, if not more, where, you know, and part of it is the changing market, right? Got to kind of relook at it. And am I telling the right story for my own business? And are there some adjustments that I have to make? And I think we all do evolve in this way. And even recently, I mean, I spent, I mean, we hired a marketing consultant last year and who is very big on branding. And we took a completely kind of fresh approach to what is our message, which led to a new website. I mean, it led to stuff I didn't feel like spending money on. (laughs) <laughs> it's always like that. It's always a waterfall. But I do think, I think bringing in new, you know, one thing that Colin has been very open about is that he's brought millennials into the fold. He wants, you know, that fresh perspective. He trusts his own instincts and in branding, but he's open to exploring, you know, other ideas and other approaches. And I think that's really, really smart. We've done that. You know, I think it's important, especially for us you know, mature folks that have been in this industry for, you know, quite a long time. I think it's important to bring in some younger faces and brains and perspectives so that we can learn from them and then, you know, always go back to trusting our own instincts for our brand. We know it best. Yeah. You know, before we go, Abby, because we're kind of getting to the end of time, are you able to say anything about what you and Tate are doing in terms of the work that you've done since taking back Style Me Pretty and how since it has been years, what, like four or five years, what you're having to do with your own brand message. I would love to. We recently just launched our little black book again. We took about eight months off. When we got it back, we decided to just boots on the ground, research, talk to vendors, and really try to find out what was missing in the wedding space in terms of a listing, a vendor directory, a vendor program. And what we found is, you know, we can tie this all up with a nice little bow, but we found that authenticity, as we talked about in the beginning, and really creating a group of vendors that we could 
proudly stand behind, even if that meant sacrificing money, sacrificing scale, that was okay with us. So we've been pretty laser focused on getting a very small collection, a very hyper curated collection of vendors to be a part of our directory and playing with different ways to market their work to you know our readers. We have the largest social following across, you know, when you tally up the social market, we have the largest one in the wedding space. And we're using our little black book members as a way to kind of leverage those readers and really let them engage with this small group of people that, you know, we trust and we love and we can stand behind their work. Now, we're still, we're not a pay for play organization, but we are all in on our vendor directory and trying to get out of this sort of very archaic approach to a listing, you know, I don't really getting them off the shelf and into the reader's hand. So we've been kind of focused on that. And then, you know, above and beyond just hyper curating, getting our style on point, getting our aesthetic on point. We have a product line coming out in August, a very small product line that we hope will really support brides and helping them to craft a really beautiful wedding. But all good things. We're feeling like we're a stronger company than we've ever been before. And I think that downsizing a little bit and really focusing on the curation has been incredibly important for that. Yeah, I love that. I know from when I sat down with you and Tate at your house for that interview that you were talking about how vendors, and I prefer to call them partners, how partners were saying to you all what we had before we want, you know, and so for you all to, you know, set that aside and say, well, is there something that we can do that's different with the current market conditions, which obviously in the end is giving the partners more value. So I love that. Well, Well, that's all we have time for today. I do want to thank everybody for listening. Check out Colin's site with everything that he has to offer at colincowie.com. Again, just his name, colincowie.com. You can also find him on social media under his name, Colin Cowie, and all the various platforms. And Abby, my gosh, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, my gosh. I had a blast. Thank you for asking me. I love sitting here and talking about all of these incredible people with you. It's the highlight of my week. So thank you. Yeah. Well, listen, now you see, now you put yourself in a box as I'm going to have to call you again and have oh, you Oh, you better. Again. I'm going to hold you to that. Oh, I will. Oh, I got some cool ones in the can. I don't want to announce <laughs> them yet. But yeah, everybody, in terms of checking out the site of Abby, go to stylemepretty.com. Again, stylemepretty.com. Same thing with social media and all her platforms. And, you know, Abby, I don't know if you know this, when Tate and I, in the very beginning, when we got made the logistics for that first interview that we did, we talked about having a follow-up so that we can go from hearing about what you all are thinking of because you had just taken back Stanley Pretty and, you know, admitted being very overwhelmed and then to get together again at some point to hear what you've done. So maybe sometime later this year, the three of us will get back on the microphone again. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So, hey, everyone, be sure to subscribe to The Wedding Biz on your podcast app because then you'll get notifications of what's going on. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Wedding Biz Show. Again, Wedding Biz Show. And please share this episode. It's really the best way to help us build this community. I've got so many plans for the future. So if you could share it with friends and colleagues, we would appreciate it. And leave a great review wherever you get your podcast from. And lastly, I want to thank our sponsors, OFD Consulting and Kushner Entertainment. And next week's release is going to be, I think the first for me, uh, bringing on a videographer. Well, there was Brett Cole although he had an interesting pivot. If you missed Brett Culp's interview, you got to check that one out. So next week's is going to be Bill Bowen. It's a very, very special conversation. So thanks again, everyone, for listening to The Next Level. And this is The Wedding Biz. Wedding Biz.